a monkey in your pants? Alright then folks, welcome back to another Bad Influence Fan Commentary. This is Series 3, Episode 11. I think I had to think there. Bad Influence was a magazine television show dedicated to computer games and computers and consoles, I suppose, in the 1990s. Um, hosted by Mr. Andy Crane and Violet Nipples and some weird fella. No. Hello from Bad Influence. Weird Andy Take Crane. Seven Dwarves. Seven More about dwarves. how they work later. Keep watching for Nipples. this competition. We've got a fantastic prize to give away. A powerful Dolph Lundgren. Pentium PC. Wow, I want and one of them. Our main review is Donkey Kong Country on the SNES. Oh, yes. Will it live up to the hype? Yes. Yes. And now be discovering new ways to explore other planets. Still not happened. Unless you mean we a rover. Pinball on bad influence. If there's ever a break in rehearsals, ooh, this is where you'll ooh, find me. as he thrust it into the machine. An arcade table like this one. This is the Flintstones, and it costs nearly three thousand pounds. Wow. Pinball tables weren't always this big or this expensive. They're ready to take over. He's right getting so, into it, though. This is what the original pinball wow. tables used to look like. They're called bagatelles. Why do we call the game pinball? Well, look, the table is peppered with pins, and you score points by bagging the ball. In the pockets. Shite. <laughs> or not. Computer pinball games oh, notoriously spectrum. program because the movement of the ball around the table is so unpredictable. We've managed to track down one of the first pinball wizard on the spectrum. Oh, I genuinely think I've got this. So old that we can't even get sound off it. What? The game, it has to be said, is rather slow. But the first one to really get Hold on, the computer soldier can't get sound out it. When it came oh. out four years Alligator. ago, what's that called? Revenge of the Gator, that's it. And cartoon characters that popped up on the I used to have this game. One of the most I'm so fucked off with that Spectrum comment. I want one of them tellies. This is Dragon's Fury on the Mega Drive. It was originally released in Japan three years ago on the PC, PC Engine. Engine. yes. And then it was called Jackie Crush. And it's still wowing players today. Especially Jamie, who's I remember playing really that, actually. Some classic pinball games are being released on other formats. This is Pinball Dreams, soon to be seen on the PC Excellent game. It has the four tables from the original Amiga version, plus four brand new ones. Excellent music as well. Crammed onto a single silver disc. And pinball games are going from strength to strength. This it's is a brand new one. Fucking Psycho Pinball Fest, this is. What game? It's got four themed tables. Pinball Psycho? Psycho one, which is made up of sub -games That looks a bit like Pinball games. Dreams or Pinball Fantasies to me. Real simulation fans. There we go. Pinball Illusions on the A1200 has pinball to be the most realistic illusions. pinball game ever. It's got three play fields, loads of extra features. I remember playing this on my friend's PC back in the day. The I'm pretty sure it was out on that. And funnily enough, I just played this the other week so at my other friend's house on his Amiga. At the same time. But are these pinball games a substitute for the real he gets thing? right into it. Look at no. him all fidgety. Oh, oh. oh my god, he's had too much sugar. Too many Skittles. Quick. Nah, yes. oh, this guy is a waste of space. Uh, only 32 shopping days to Christmas, but uh, I'm not panicking because Hence tips, I've already cheats. ordered exciting Pedophilia. presents for my That's his specialities, no doubt. Great catalog. I'm expecting a delivery any second. Oh, well, shell suit. Someday, uh, throw a match at a shell suit. On the SNES that lets you play with a brand new secret <laughs> Rock and roll racing. On the select hero screen, hold down L, R, and select. I miss cheats like the this. In the normal way, until you come to the brand new one, Olaf the Viking. Hey, having a break from the lost Vikings game. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> my inventory stuff. I thought survived. that thing was the doorbell. Oh. <laughs> Isn't my doorbell? I nearly thought, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to pause this video. What's he got? Whoa. Let's have a look. Nothing. Hey. Oh, brilliant! My polystyrene bits. Yes, this one's for Andy, and uh, this one's for Violet. Uh, I'm, I'm no expert, no, 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 but I don't no, think it's a good idea Andy having those polystyrene bits Violet. next to those <laughs> circuit boards well, with static electricity. Our main review this week is the one you've been waiting for, Donkey Kong Country on the Fucking Snake. epic game. It's the first console game to be developed on a supercomputer, Ooh. and it shows. But does it have the personality to back up its stunning good looks? Of course it does. Here's Chris Tatella. Oh, 5 out of 5, winner. Just telling you already, 5 the out of 5. 3D quality of the main sprites puts all other game characters to shame. 60 this pounds. This game you won't want to put down. If you're playing as Donkey Kong, you'll find at the beginning of each level a barrel with Diddy Kong in it, and you can get it like this. If you've got both Kongs on the screen at once, you control one, and the other just follows. Now both Kongs have different abilities. For example, Diddy Kong can run I remember getting this game originally, and, and I was wowed. Now. 
The sound effects and music in this game are excellent. You won't really want to turn it off. Exactly. A very common feature in this game are these barrels. It's quite difficult and you have to be very precise with your timing. There's a two-player option in the game. You can take it in turns to control a Kong each. It's a really good way for a younger player to learn, playing with a more experienced See, player. now... I played it with my little brother and it worked really I, well. I forgot that was a two-player game. On each level you can find friends which you can hit right Oh, on. the music! It's amazing! To control. In fact, in general, the control system is very natural. I've never played properly the thing. second or the third one. It's fun to play and gorgeous to look Only at. the first. What more could you want from a platform game? I thought I'd be disappointed by five this out of five. there's so much hype around in the game, but I love it. This is a five out of five. Art. The game is just your basic platform stuff, but it looks so good you just want to keep playing. And the scores, Donkey Kong Country five. gets a Kong size 5 out of 5 from the boys and the girls. Georgia. Ops. A well-deserved maximum score for Donkey Kong Country. The SNES was launched in the UK two and a half years ago, but it's only now that games programmers are really using the machine's unique capabilities to the full. Extreme close-up on Andy's a face. report from Z Wright, who, as I speak, is 380. That little windmill thing in the background looks like it's of a total recall, and people are controlling the air. It was just over 25 years Something ago like that. that a man first stepped on the surface of the moon. Prove it. Since that historic moment, only 11 other people have set foot on lunar dust. Prove it. Why? Prove because it. Because it takes years to train an astronaut, and it costs billions of dollars to launch the manned spacecraft. Prove it. A safer and cheaper way to explore the moon and other planets is with remote control rovers. These striking pictures of the Martian surface were sent back by the Viking 1 and 2 missions in the mid-70s. Prove it. But it's still <laughs> not like really being there. You can only see what's directly in front of the camera. And even pictures from the moon, which is our closest neighbor, take about five seconds to arrive back at Earth. Wow, five seconds. For the operator, it's almost as difficult as driving a car wearing a blindfold. He has to ease forward very carefully and very slowly to avoid crashing into a crater. Or anything else. So down on Earth at NASA's Ames Research Center, just outside San Francisco, where the alien machines are kept, to may I say, the old remote control technology with the latest oh. virtual reality ideas. They've called VR. their new concept telepresence, and they've already tested it in some of the most difficult conditions they can find on this planet. This robotic submarine is exploring the bottom of an ice-covered Antarctic lake. Basically, what telepresence is, is it's an ability to project your senses into the robot. What I accomplish by doing that is having the cameras on the vehicle. I take it you can't just move like a crazy mofo and have a big and dancing rock. fit. Oh, there's a bit of lag. That's going to make you a bit spewy. And I'm seeing what's coming up through those cameras. Display directly into. Oh, two minutes on that, and you'll be wanting to vomit everywhere. Surely you'll be spewing the your load. The test of the technology was the Dante Project. Dante. Last July, a walking robot went down an active volcano in Alaska to explore the crater floor. Cool. As well as the telepresence cameras, Imagine if you just the slipped. Dante robot had six other video cameras to provide the operators with all-round vision. There were two control rooms, one at the crater rim. Dante one back at looks Ames, like he moves course, very no slowly. Time. Yeah, I forgot but to say, the um, of the this program is always, is that an Oculus Rift? Mars, which is so far away always had these educational sections. 40 minutes to travel back to Earth. Some 40 minutes. For time delay to some extent by using uh, virtual reality techniques. It takes 40 minutes to get the signal back to Earth. Jesus. Dante. This is the eight-legged walking robot Dante. I love that name. That Dante. It sensed with its onboard sensors. Wherever the robot steps, it leaves a pad so we can see where it's walked. And then this brown terrain that you see around the robot is, is the poop. physical terrain <laughs> that it's in right now. I can uh, use this uh, computer-generated graphics to uh, fly around in the scene and, and look at the robot as if I were there at the site. But it's independent of the time distance, the time delay between us and the robot. And it's also in uh, 10 frames per second. The 12 people who visited the moon during the Apollo mission have all been killed all because they did not visit the moon. It's a lie. Years for it, Maybe not. They braved great dangers to get there and back. Probably is. Telepresence technology will open up the solar system to a whole range of people scientists, explorers, and even tourists. There are already plans to put a buggy on the moon in two years and operated by Telepresence as a theme park attraction. Oh, well, that didn't happen, Until did it? Then, this is the nearest Not unless it was only for extremely rich people. Mm. No, I never Just heard of it. There, I really thought Z was on the surface of the moon. 
You can find out all you ever wanted to know about robots on a new CD-ROM that's just hit the shops called Isaac Asimov's The Ultimate Robot. Isaac Asimov is Isaac a famous science fiction Asimov? who wrote loads of stories about yeah, robots. When I was 19, I started writing stories. If you want to look at some of the robots that have been constructed for the movies, there's a section where you can look at... I bet you this shit used to blow movies. people's minds. Here we are, robots in the cinema. Video awesome on computers. You got to remember, this was like, Don't say like that. Of course we'll quite a while ago. I'm sure you will, but not today. There's also an interactive section called the Robotoid Assembly Robotoid Toolkit. Robotoid Assembly you Toolkit. I want a shot. Nah, I'm good. Of of funny walks. Don't want a, a shot. May not a human being. Well, I'm afraid we'll have to leave my android friend there reciting the three laws of robotics because now it's time for this week's news and previews. News and previews. What new games are coming out, children? Robots are everywhere. The long-awaited rise of the robots oh. comes out on computer format Just tomorrow. Sh skip the it. The game has artificial intelligence. No, it doesn't. So when you play against the computer, the opponent robots learn your favourite No, modes. they don't. They can then adapt their tactics to make things more difficult No, they don't. For you. Such Console a lie. versions will be out next month. Such a bad game. Those nice people who brought you FIFA Soccer have a new sports sim in production. Rugby World Cup 1995. Oh. I wonder Rugby why I never heard of this game. Because of all the stopping and starting. Out on the Mega Drive next month. The cult novels of American writer and illustrator Mark Schultz have Who? been turned into a CD game. Cadillacs and Dinosaurs takes you to a world 600 years from now, when the human race is in danger of being wiped out by prehistoric creatures. Out early next year, well, CD and PC CD ROM. No. Uh, brilliant. Does <laughs> not look good. accurate, technologically advanced alarm clocks. <laughs> oh, Fertless, these alarm clocks are brilliant. <laughs> There's one which is accurate to a millionth of a second every 800 years. <laughs> There's one which projects the time. Look at Ooh. that. Hey. And there's even one which you throw at the floor when the alarm goes off to stop it. Ah, brilliant! And equally brilliant is this cheat for Fatal Fury on the Mega Drive. On the continue screen, just hold down up A, B and C, then let them all go and repeat the process. And each time you do, you'll get an extra credit. There we go, nine. King oh, of Fighters. I've accidentally set the alarm. Oh no! The wrong one! Oh dear! I know. I'll give it to Violet and tell her it's a build it yourself alarm clock kit. Thing is, she'll believe him as well. Why did he's anybody ever think he was a good Doc idea? Is a very stupid Not Andy Crane. Stupid because he's been Nam. programmed to do one thing and one Nam thing only. Root. That is to play follow my leader a bit like a duckling, as have all these guys down here. So if they want to dutifully follow Mother Duck, who in this case is the unlikely figure of Colin on camera four, if he pulls away, they will follow him. Go on, Doc, keep up, keep up. They see in here a bit like a bat does. They send out high-pitched ultrasonic signals and then listen for the echoes coming back. And don't they look sweet? <laughs> and this one's just as cute and just as stupid. It behaves like a puppy, which means it'll follow you what anywhere, it? just like Peas in it. Poos. when you turn it, it and it chews stuff. Because that's the what puppies do. Are stupid is because they're I've only got one. To do one thing, to either follow or avoid. And they have no knowledge of their environment, nor can they learn from their experience because they haven't got any memory either. Get out of here. They call this one the cat. It's got more sensors and three rules of behaving. Rule one is to avoid obstacles. As you can see, it's backing away from the shoes there. Rule two is to avoid enemies, represented there by an infrared beacon being held by Abby. Rule number three is to stalk prey. The prey is being represented by another infrared beacon. And there he is, following his nose, going after the prey. What another is the point in that? It can recharge itself when it gets tired. And we recorded it earlier today doing just that. It can find its own electricity supply and dock with it when it's is this, is a Did they think this was going to be like the toy of the future? The this is Bashful. Bashful is the only one that isn't stupid because Bashful can learn from his experiences. When you switch him on, he knows literally nothing at all. What he wants to do is go forward without running into things. But he doesn't know how to do it. So at the moment, he's just doing random motor movements to see what that makes him do. And he's thinking about what signals the sensors are sending back to him. If he runs into something, he'll recognise the next time the sensors send that same signal to avoid it. At least they made it when have a little smiley face. To learn like he is doing now, he learns quite quickly how to go forward. But if we're cruel to Bashful, let me switch him off so he forgets everything he's learned. And guys, all come in in a big tight circle. Get your feet oh out. my god, they're going to make and the little robot Bashful thing have an absolute hairy fit. Claustrophobic robot. Hostile environment. You see, he behaves 
really spasmodically and erratically. Spasmodically. Because there's no space for him. Now, if we all step back together, now, you see, he's still behaving in that erratic manner. He still hasn't yet learned how to go forward. This is because, really, he needs the wide open spaces. He needs sort of freedom to learn and develop and, and sort of Although evolve they may seem as a crude, robot. Although these I mean, robots the are among the most intelligent ever robot, made. So They've been designed at Reading University I mean, to test out ideas that will lead to the R2-D2 and C-3PO of the future. Uh, yeah, he should thank be told he can come in for his tea before half past six. And now for some more games reviews. The hell is on the crate on? Magic Carpet. ever reviewed on Bad Influence. The game is a flight First PC game and strategy game ever reviewed. One. You're one of those um, wizards buying played it primarily on the PlayStation One. Mythical beasts. Your challenge is to collect special I'm imagining or it doesn't even compare to the PC version. Although I and may be wrong. Like most flight sims, however hard you try, you can uh, never crash the car. I would not call it a Here's flight Evan. sim, surely, Violet. We just don't have time in a review this short to do justice to a game that's this big. Yeah, man. But believe me, it is really good. Really good and really big. The minimum you need to run this game is a 486 PC with 4 megabytes of memory. Well, look, but to really get the best out of it, you need he's a talking about. PC. When you first start the game, you need you a GTX 1080 Ti. Which is a bad thing if you're a wizard. So you've got to collect them from red urns, which are scattered about the landscape. When you pick one up, the icon on the top right tells you what you've got. This one lets you build your castle. Magic powers is what you've got. You might think that Paul Daniels has got some magic spell. <laughs> he hasn't. With a bit of power on this game, you can have meteor storms. A bit. I played this recently on the PlayStation One, and it is a bitch and to control. You can have your very own army I'd imagine of it's a much when easier on the PC. Too much for even a wizard of your stature to handle. This is a really good game, very original. But to play it properly, you need a lot of time and a lot of money. Four out of five. This is simply stunning. A lot of money it's quite to build a hard the game PC. To get into though, because the story is rather complicated. This is the first flight sim I've ever been bothered to play. It's not flight sim, you really vagina nice face. Some brilliant ideas. The boys and the girls four. agree. Magic carpet five? is a great game. That is, afford it, five that is five. not as good as Donkey Kong Country. Vortex is the latest game to use the SNES Super FX chip. The worlds are all on this game multiple easy. times. You can move in any Never played it. Also, you can transform your fighting craft into different battle systems. Here's Aisha. Battle systems. Three out of five. Sucks. When you first play this game, it just, takes just ages saying. to figure out where just you're supposed to be on screen. And then when you do, it's really difficult to control. Hmm. This is the first level of the game. It ain't no Starwing, is it? Or Star Fox. It's pretty hard to play this game. It's particularly hard to control. And what I happened there? Very playable either. Just went through a big, big. I'm block. not impressed. It's not a patch on Starwing. I'm not even excited by the graphics as I've seen them all before. Oh no. I quite like this. Ooh. It's a simple but effective 3D shooter map with no pretensions. No what like pretensions? Is that what he said? I'm not too crazy about the gameplay either. It's just an average shooter map. Scores then. Uh. Vortex gets an ordinary three from the boys. What did I say? Goes. Four? Or did I say three? Well, Can't remember. The relaxing and easy to wear. What? Massage shorts. Oh, <laughs> felt Perfect. shorts. That's what they are. Sex the shorts. Of a relaxing massage with with his sex helmet. Yet inconspicuous and his massage sex shorts. belt. I'm also wearing the matching massage belt. Neck exerciser Sex. And Neck exerciser. I can't wait to it's, try it's out, basically first, sexual VR. Cheap, I've decided. On the game gear. Race backwards on the oh my god, I bet that's a wee bit hard to play in the game course. gear because the tiny, and tiny screen. One lap, you'll hear a tone that confirms the cheats worked. You'll now end up in first position after every race, regardless of where you actually What's finish. What's this fun in that? And now, time for my relaxing and enervating, but discreet and inconspicuous. Massage. Inconspicuous. Uh, massage short. Whoa. Oh, kinky. Massage belt. Whoa. <laughs> Neck exerciser. Whoa. Head vibrator. Whoa. Way. Whoa. 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 That's what I call good vibration. Mm. Last week's competition prize. Street Racer. Snares and a copy of Street Racer. We asked you which. Formula One Grand Prix is raced around the streets of a European city rather than a racetrack. What? And the answer, Monaco. as 17,000 of you phoned in, is the Monaco oh, Grand Prix held every year in Monte Carlo. I want that. And the winner, street, as randomly selected street, by the band influence, street racer Peter, with the no label on it. From well done. No, it was me Anyone from Scotland. I won. This week's prize is this state of the art astronomically fast Pentium PC Behemoth. with a magic carpet. I kid you not. And the competition question is. 
not including Z, how many people have walked on the moon? If you think you know, you can call with your answer on 0891. Fucking winner, I'm phoning that. None. 0891 Call will cost you number Winner, I'm going to get the fast PC. Midnight on Monday, but do please get permission from whoever pays the bill before you dial because you can't win if you don't ask permission, and we always check. No, you don't. don't. Like your mum's going to say, no, you, you can't. He didn't. Make your own he can't win. Magic Eye, pictures. Well, Here's one magic eye. remember that? Bye bye. Melted your brains. Wow, that was quick. I'm not even going to attempt that magic eye. There you go then folks, that was Bad Influence Fan Commentary Season 3, Episode 11, I think. Glorious retro goodness for your eyes, ears and brain. As always though from me, thank you much for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe and I will catch you next time. Do you have a monkey in your pants?